Hi friends, welcome back to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. This is the next installment of our backyard renovation project. And this is gonna be kind of a compilation of all the tiny little things that have to be done before we can really start installing the new plants. So um, I don't know exactly what all is gonna be in this video, but it will just be kind of a mishmash of little tasks, big tasks, and the progress that we make over the course of the coming let's say five or six days. We're due for a spate of good weather coming along, nice beautiful days, and so I'm hoping that we can get a lot done out here. So come on along and follow with me and let's see what kind of progress we can make this week. What do you think puppies? You gonna be my helpers? No? Okay, today's task is I'm gonna address this clump of wildness right here. I have no idea what these shrubs are. Um, there's a chance that they're some sort of privet, but uh, I guess I don't know what privet is. So I keep seeing plants in the landscape and wondering, is this privet? I don't know. So anyway, there's um, some that have grown into like small tree sized, but they're so, so scraggly and so wild looking and not very pretty to look at. And also they never really fill in very fully. So it just looks like brambles. And then um, down here below, it looks to me like these are sucker root growth off of some more of those big ones that had been cut down. So today I'm going to cut out at least all the small ones and then we'll see what the big ones look like and they may come down too. Those were so poorly uh, unhealthy that I was able to pull almost all of them out just by the roots. The roots were really shallow, less than six inches deep. And uh, so I'm thinking that the big tall ones aren't any healthier than that. Their roots are probably not very strong either. And it's just a mangy mess. So, I mean, I'll trim off some of the suckers on the bottom of the big trunks and see if that improves anything, but uh, really leaning toward taking out the big ones too. Yeah, so there's nothing much to look at. I know that I haven't really leafed out for the spring yet, but honestly, in the summer, they're really not all that much fuller. So. I don't know, maybe I'll leave it for today and then live with it for a couple of days, see if they leave out any better and come after them later. But I did order a bunch of plants and they're gonna be delivered this week sometime. So next weekend, I'm hoping we'll be able to start some planting down in here. And this area is where I have three emerald green arborvitaes going in, in kind of a curve to start defining the new lawn edging. So uh, these trees will be in the way of those and so, I don't know. I'll sleep on it, mainly because I'm out of breath right now and I don't really want to get out my handsaw and I don't have a chainsaw. So, yeah, I'll let them live there for a little while longer and then we'll decide. Let me get these branches cleaned up. Okay, that is not my favorite job, but... I don't think it's my husband's favorite job either, so the last time I did pruning, I left it all for him to do, so that wasn't very nice of me. So I figured I could take care of my own prunings today, and so that's done. All right, so the trees, I am darn sure that those are going to come out over the next week or two to make room for the arborvitaes that are going to go in here in a nice curve. Um, hey, by the way, um... This job is always such a drag and I really wish that I had a good quality chipper shredder for home use that I could use to grind these up and put them into the compost pile. As it is, we chop them up small and put them into trash and send them out with the yard waste uh, because we do have yard waste service included in our trash pickup here. Um, but I'd rather have it in my own compost bin, but I don't want to put big, huge sticks into the compost bin. So if you know of a good quality, not too cheap, not too cheaply made is what I mean, but not incredibly expensive. Uh, chipper shredder for home use. 
let me know. I'd love to have one for limbs up to like an inch diameter. So if you can recommend a uh, chipper shredder to me, please do. I would love to hear your thoughts. Today's a great day to start hardening off my dahlias and African daisy seedlings. Um, I potted them up into larger pots a couple of days ago, and uh, I think they're well settled into their new pots now. And so now it's time to start hardening them off. So I've placed some right down here in the shade of our picket fence. So they're gonna get dappled shade across the next couple of hours. So this is a nice spot because it's half shade, half sun. And I'll just keep them here for a couple of hours and that'll be their second day outside. So it's exciting times today because I have laid out what I believe is going to be the edge of the planting area in the backyard renovation. I used an orange extension cord to lay down where I think the edges of the beds are gonna be. This portion of the grass needs to stay the way it is. Um, I can't really make this part of the planting area much bigger here because um, there's only about four feet of access from the brick walkway into the lawn. Um, I mean, if we wanted to make this whole thing planting area, we could, and we'd have to put in some stepping stones there. And that actually might happen sometime in the future. But for now, we're gonna take, um, we're gonna leave this grass here, and then this flower bed will kind of still keep this curve here. We need to straighten it up, but. All right, so we'll start here with the current edge of what we have up against the fence. And then it'll be a nice curve around my corner and then we'll start curving. And this is just gonna be a gradual curve. We're not measuring anything. We're not making sure anything's symmetric. We're just gonna eyeball it. And the reason for that is that um, this yard slopes down pretty dramatically and it fools the eye with regard to depth perception. So I feel like even if we did measure out a perfect oval with two focus points and, and do all the measurements, I feel like it still wouldn't matter because if your eye thinks it's good, then it's good on this slopey hill. So we're just going with that theory here. So this is gonna be a nice curved edge. We're gonna gain all of this planting area right here. I'm planning to put a limelight hydrangea right here. And I think it's gonna be a lovely accent. It gets a lot of sun here. Um, and I think it's going to be beautiful. It'll get pretty tall. Uh, you know, I think it's mature size. It'll be like six feet tall, maybe even taller. Um, but for the first couple of years, it'll be small, of course. Um, so a nice planting area here with this, um, the star of the show here will be the hydrangea. And then I'm thinking about shrub roses or other sorts of things to put in this area. But I haven't made any decisions yet. Okay, and so then we curve down here along the fence. We've decided not to make any straight edges along the fence. We're gonna keep it all a curve. And again, you can see how much planting space we're gaining. Right now, the planting space against the fence is about a foot and a half between the fence and the grass. And we're gonna at least double that, but probably significantly increase that at the curve parts. All of this area here will be additional planting area. Right now, they haven't come out yet, but we've got dormant astilbe and hosta and uh, liriope and lots of varieties of each of those things in this area right here. And so as soon as they start to come out, I'll be able to pull them up and save them uh, because in this area, we're putting one dragon lady holly here and one back, um, kind of between this post and the stage. And so this has to move and all the perennials that are in here probably will have to move. So, but I can't move them if I can't see them. So we gotta wait for them to appear before we can do that. All right, so this curve comes along. It goes right up against the front of the stage right here. This is staying. We hold concerts in the summer here um, when we're not in a pandemic situation, but for now we're using it as a, just a casual place to hang out and sit and take breaks from yard work. Okay, so it'll come off the front of the stage and it'll just be a gentle, gentle curving um, across to this side of the yard. 
Um, so as I stand here, kind of in the center of the yard, the curve will be very gradual. It might actually even look straight to the eye, again, because of the way the slope fools the eye. Um, but it's not gonna be very deep off of there. It's gonna pretty much just come right off of the stage and start to curve around. We're gonna have a trellis, an arbor. Now I'm thinking it'll be four feet wide, which would be about, uh, about there to there and probably eight feet tall, seven or eight feet tall, which I think in perspective would bring it about, about to there. So uh, from this perspective, it would be about that tall and about this wide. And I think two or th two and a half feet deep. And so that will be right here. On this side of the trellis, I'm planting a Chinese snowball viburnum. And over time, I'm going to turn that into a small tree. It'll take years to do that, but um, that's the eventual plan there. So we'll have eventually a small limbed up tree style uh, snowball hydrangea. But in the early years, it'll be a shrub, a ball shaped shrub down low. And then on this side of the arbor, we're going to have, I bought um, Cherokee Princess uh, Cornus Florida, which is a dogwood, the native style. So that'll have light pink uh, flowers in the spring. And again, eventually it'll grow. It'll be about that tall and about this wide on this view. But in the early days, it'll be only about that tall and only about this wide. Um, and then around this way, as we turn the corner, we have this orange um, curve shows us where the grass line will be and the mulch line. And uh, right here, uh, one, two, three, um, I bought arborvitaes, emerald green arborvitaes. Probably, yeah, probably one there, right uh, roughly where the vinca and the grass meet. And then it'll gently follow the curve around. So that'll be tall. Um, I bought the big ones. I think the ones I got are six feet tall already. So eventually those will grow up. I'm gonna keep them pruned. They won't get their full size, but um, they will provide some screening around this curve. So when you're sitting up at the top of the yard and you look down this way, it'll hide this structure and it'll contribute to hiding this part of the chain link fence and the gate and a little bit of the house, although not much. Okay, so we've got the three arbs. We've got the um, dogwood tree. I have four azaleas right here that I'm going to pull out and curve them this way. And we're gonna have a path that comes from the gate through this way and then t through the trellis arbor. So it'll be an S curve. And so those azaleas are gonna get moved to be along that S curve. And then I'm still looking for plants to fill in this area. Um, these are two cryptomeria and there's a third behind the fence. Those will grow up and be nice and bushy and hide that house. I bought four skip laurels and they'll go on the outside of the fence around in a cup shape around this pole and the guy wire. So that'll contribute to um, kind of hiding that. And then we've got the three Leylands down there. And I also bought three um, hollies. I got two China girls and one China boy holly that will go outside the fence. And I haven't sighted them yet. I kind of want to get the skip laurels in and see how things look. But um, the hollies will go outside there. And I'm thinking maybe a couple of Andromedas also, but I haven't bought those yet. So, uh, so that's the plan there. I bought four shamrock inkberry hollies to go this side of the fence up against the fence to contribute to hiding the fence. Um, and I was gonna get, but I decided not to get um, Canadian hemlocks to put behind the stage up against the fence over here. Uh, but we have the um, the pest, the woolly agelid, agel, agelid, woolly. I forget, I forget how to say it, but there's a pest that is going throughout Maryland and the Mid-Atlantic area that kills hemlocks. So I decided not to get hemlocks, and I think I'm going to look into what else I can put in there. Um, I have some ideas on my list, but I can't remember what they are right now. So, um, so that's kind of the vision for this part of the yard. It's getting exciting because the plants I ordered will be delivered this week, and we'll be able to start putting in the three Arborvitaes, the Cherokee Princess, um, we'll be, I ordered mail order, the Chinese snowball. Um, so that'll be coming. Uh, I'll get the four ink berries in this week. The four skip laurels are going to arrive this week. So we'll have a lot of planting that we can do. And, um, it's totally going to change the look and feel of this backyard. So 
I also know that um, in the early days, this is gonna look like a big pile of mulch and not many plants because um, I'm, by, I'm spacing the plants for their eventual growth. I'm not spacing them for immediate gratification on, in terms of filling in the garden. So there's gonna be a lot of empty space this year. There's gonna be a lot of growing over time, um, but that's all good. That is how I have always gardened and I always will garden that way. Who can afford to fill in every plant in the first year? nobody that I know of anyway. So, um, so that's the vision. Um, there's a couple of things that I didn't mention, but, um, it's coming along and it's exciting. So I'm really glad to have the edges, um, defined right now. I think Dave's already started working up there on that corner because I would like to get the, um, limelight hydrangea put in place, uh, pretty much as soon as it arrives this week. So, Monday afternoon I can call and find out when I'm on the schedule for the delivery. It'll be this week sometime and I think we're due for good weather this week so I'm really hopeful that a lot of the plants that I have ordered that will be arriving will be able to get into the ground sometime before the end of next weekend so it's very exciting time. Okay, so we have the edges cut for the new planting area. It is a thing of beauty. We will be having this gradual, curvy, oval shape area in the backyard. I really feel like the lawn is gonna look so much more intentional. It's not gonna just be random shapes that were here for the last hundred years or whoever was gardening at what point in time. This is gonna be on purpose, intentional, and purposeful. So. I'm very excited. Yay! All right, you have to imagine this picnic table is not there. It's going away. It's starting to come together. One last update for today. Uh, I staked out where my four foot wide and 30 inch deep arbor would go at the edge of the grass and the planting area. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. We're having a beautiful string of weather here. Um, it's supposed to get up to the mid 60s Fahrenheit today and clear blue sky, maybe a puffy cloud here or there. Right now it's in the low 50s. Um, and so it's beautiful morning to get out and start doing some things around the yard today. We're having a truckload of mulch and a half a truckload of compost delivered in about an hour. So I need to move all my pots out of the way because this is going to be 17 yards of shredded hardwood mulch and five yards of compost. So let me get moving. Uh, by the way, none of the daffodils that I planted a couple of weeks ago out here are showing any sign of life. So this experiment probably didn't work, but we're still gonna give it time. All right, so now this whole parking pad right here will be filled with a big mountain of mulch here in just a few short minutes. Well, probably an hour from now, we'll see. So this is the time of year that my driveway starts to look a little bit like a nursery, a garden center, because I start collecting plants and I store them in pots on the stairs and along this wall. Um, as they wait for their final destination. Let me show you what I've gathered so far. So here I've got some daffodils and pansies and violas, um, violas, I suppose. Um, and these are going to become a gift for some of my good friends. So if my good friends are watching this, close your eyes, cause that's gonna be a surprise for you this weekend. Okay, and then over here, you may have seen this before in a previous video, I can't remember. I picked up two new candy tuft I love Candy Tuft and I haven't had a wonderful success, but I'm gonna try harder to make sure that they get the kind of environment that they need. I think it's a water problem, but I'm not sure. These are the topiaries that I worked on recently um, in a video uh, this past weekend. At the top of the stairs is a lemon, no, sorry, that is a Golden Charm Thread Branch Cypress. And that is gonna become a six foot tall by three or four feet wide shrub in its adult form, but it's gonna take a while to get there. Um, and that's gonna go into the backyard renovation somewhere. It's not on my planting plan, but that doesn't mean that it won't have a beautiful spot. I 
I'm using my planting plan as the basis, but then I am buying other things to fill in when they catch my eye at the nursery. And so here is a case in point, these China Boy and China Girl Hollies. I picked these up at the home improvement store. China Girl is the one that gets the berries and it needs a China Boy to fertilize. So China Boy gets flowers, but no berries. And the pollen from this is used to um, fertilize the pollen over here. And so then the girls get berries. So I bought two China Girls and one China Boy. These are gonna go behind the fence somewhere near the Leyland Cypress or Skip Laurels. But until I get the Skip Laurels in, I don't wanna plant these cause I wanna see how they all look together. Yesterday at the home improvement store, these caught my eye partly because of the flower. Nothing else at the garden center was really flowering yet. Although I know these are, uh, these are nursery grown. So um, they, uh, are flowering before they would in nature. Um, but I have never had flowering quince before. I think these are gorgeous. And these will um, be beautiful in the landscape. Um, this is Double Take Pink Storm, thornless, which is good. And these will grow to be uh, four to five feet tall and wide. Um, and I am looking forward to having this color. I don't have anything else of this color in my garden. So this is a, a pretty coral kind of orangey, orangey reddish pink. And um, I'm looking forward to how this will fit in. I, I'm thinking I'll put these um, near the Emerald Green Arborvitaes on the north side of the backyard. So I think with the Arborvitae behind them, these will really pop out um, when they flower. So that's the idea there. And so then um, at this point, I, I'm still collecting flowers. I probably will be out and about. I'll probably still be buying things that catch my eye. Um, I still have a couple of things on my planting plan that I haven't picked up yet. Um, but at, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the plants to be delivered that I ordered last week. Um, I'm on the schedule for delivery on Thursday. Uh, which is two days from now. So um, when they come, we'll get those plants situated. We probably won't get them all planted right away, but we'll get them placed out where they're gonna go. And then we'll be able to tell spacing and, and look how things look together. And then some of these will go into their final places. Yesterday, Dave started tearing out some of the sod in this corner where we're gonna put the um, limelight hydrangea. And so I think today I will work on extending this line down the hill. As I was cleaning out the grass and, uh, and the sod out of the dirt, um, I found that we're growing moss up here on this hill and I didn't realize that. And so um, it might be pretty, uh, you know, fiddly work, but I think I'm gonna try to save quite a bit of this moss because I have an idea for how I'll use it. I'd like to grow this moss in other places. So I'm gonna go get a container and put some water in it and put these in the water to soak and stay hydrated. And uh, I'll try to save, I don't know, as much as I can. huge pile of mulch that is 17 cubic yards and last year we bought 13 cubic yards and I wrote down in my journal that I needed 15 yards because we ran out before we were done mulching everything in our property um, so I bought 17 this year because I needed 15 for what I had last year 
and we added a whole bunch more planting area this year so 17 yards I'm gonna have to make it stretch because that is a whole truck they you know pretty much can't deliver more than that so um, I got my invoice here he's gonna come back in about an hour and he's gonna bring five yards of compost and it's gonna be a mix of leaf grow and mushroom compost so it'll be a nice kind of uh, general purpose compost that I'll be using to top dress a lot of our flower beds and uh, also we'll be putting some into planting holes for all the new plants that we're buying so lots of wheelbarrow trips around the yard coming up in the next couple of weeks but yay this means we can really get started planting things in our yard yay! so you can see my method is a little bit um, uh, slow and steady, I guess I would say. Uh, so a couple of things. One, to use a wheelbarrow in the backyard, because of these stairs, we have to roll the wheelbarrow all the way out the front yard, around the side yard, and down to the driveway. So wheelbarrows, while they're very useful in moving large loads at a time, it's not useful for me because it's a long way around and it's heavy if it's full. So, um, I'm using these five gallon buckets to fill up. I'm just skimming the surface of the soil to pick up the moss and the grass. The grass actually isn't very thick in here. And that's why we have moss. So it's actually not terribly hard work. My husband and I have slightly different methods because the areas that he did yesterday on the edges of it, I found a little bit of stuff that I wanted to get out, but that's okay. He and I do things differently, but complimentary and it all works out in the end. So. Um, but from here here down, I should be able to just skim off that top layer, put it in the bucket, and then carry the buckets down two at a time. We're putting them down on the compost bin, and then when that gets too full, um, we're just going to make a pile on what looks to be your left side of the compost bin, right up against it. And that'll be where we put this uh, lawn waste. I know we're going to have a lot of it. Now you might be thinking, why aren't we using no dig, Jenny? And we thought about using no dig, and it's something that I would like to try on a, a experimental basis somewhere else in the yard in the future. But because we're planting this right away, and I didn't think ahead, and um, I just don't, I don't want to be planting into a brand new no dig thing. I want to be able to put down the cardboard, put down the soil, and let it stay there for a few months, or maybe even over the winter. Uh, before I try to plant into it. Um, so we're not going to be using no dig anywhere in the backyard project this season. However, I do believe looking ahead after we get the backyard kind of done, although is a garden never done, um, after we get this main project done this season, toward the fall, I'll probably out in front of the gate on the north side of our property, on the property line between us and our next door neighbors, I'll probably start a no dig bed up there. And um, and then next spring we'll plant into it. So that's kind of my thought on no dig. I've never done it that way before. And I, I don't want to have a, a new garden that I didn't prepare properly um, and rely on that no dig method. So what we've decided to do is just do what we're doing here, take the sod out little bits at a time and um, and actually, when it comes time to planting in the new planting space down at the bottom, one thought is that we're just going to find the places where the new plants go, tear out the sod in that circle, plant the new plant, and then over time, uh, dig out the grass around it. So there's no rush. Um, the only thing I think is that we do want to get the mulch spread, but I mean, last year's um, mulch pile was there for six weeks before we finish spreading it. So I think between now and the next four to six weeks, we'll be able to plant the stuff down there that we've bought so far, and then gradually work the soil, um, get that lawn out. So that was a very long rambling way to say, I'm gonna dig some more sod up. Guess who's got some work cut out for them over the next couple of weekends? This mulch is double shredded hardwood and 
it is gorgeous stuff it um is beautiful color there's no dye added to this this is natural color i think they shred it in last summer and then they sell it this summer um so it's very similar to what this mulch is this is the ground up stump uh from the tree that we had taken down the black walnut tree so this kind of thing turns into this after you uh leave it over the winter and then down here we've got five cubic yards of compost. This is a combination, actually, it's a nice mix of mushroom compost, leaf grow, and topsoil. So I think he said there was two and a half yards of mushroom, one and a half yards of leaf grow, and one yard of topsoil in that mix. So it's beautiful. It's got good nutrition. It's got nice lofty um, texture. And I can use this directly as a potting soil in containers if I wanted, or I could add some peat moss to it, or, um, you know, just garden soil or whatever. But um, yeah, this is a great mix. As I was pulling out the sod and the moss down in the corner down there, um, I came across my little liriope starts that I had put in along the fence last year. Um, this was a division of a huge clump of liriope that I had in a different part of the yard. I divided it up into individual little sprigs because I know that um, over time it will grow into a nice big clump. And I had put them down along the fence down there. So I have all these little liriope things that are coming up out of the soil. They're not going to be there for the long term. I need to save them though. So I'm going to um, just put them into some of that brand new pile of compost that I got and just store them in this compost for until I decide where they're going to end up. On an unexpected trip to a brand new to me garden center. We're here at Glendon Gardens in Hampstead, Maryland. By the way, this is an unscheduled trip to the garden center. The reason I'm coming today is because tomorrow I start a two week quarantine so that I can go visit my brand new granddaughter who was born last week. She lives in Minnesota along with her big brother, my grandson, and my son and daughter-in-law. And so I'm going to start quarantining tomorrow so that my husband and I, who has been vaccinated, can go up to Minnesota to see the new baby and the grandson and the kids, of course. So that's why I'm coming to the garden center today is so that I can see if I can fill in my planting plan, pick up some things that I still need that I haven't been able to find yet, and then I can spend the next two weeks planting things happily in my own yard. Okay, so. so from Glendon Gardens, well, first of all, I think I showed you already the new uh, flowering quince. Um, I got two kinds of lavender. I've not grown lavender before, really. And so I got one that is, I believe, uh, Munstead. Yep, Munstead. And I got the other is Hidcoat. And I don't know what the differences are, and I don't know which one will do better for me, if either one is better than the other. So I figured, let's grow them both and see what happens. All right, I got a Campsis Radicans Indian Summer Trumpet Vine, and so that will grow on a chain link fence somewhere. I just have to cite it properly. I This is from Home Depot, I believe. I got a Clematis Nellie Moser, and this will go on a chain link fence, I hope. From um, Glendon, I got a 12 Violette Clematis and a Jack Manii Clematis. So three new Clematises and one new Trumpet Vine. So that'll be fun. And then I got this Father Gila, is that how you say it? Father Gila, Father, Father Gia, I don't know. Mount Airy, which is a witch alder, which gets these bottle brushy kind of um, flowers in the spring, followed by really interesting sort of ridged leaves in the summer. And then in the fall, it's very brightly colored, red, yellow, and orange all over the plant. Finally, I got um, Rosa Sharon, pink chiffon and so that will go into the backyard somewhere as well um, based on my soil test that I did earlier I also picked up some aluminum sulfate to help with acidifying my soil I got some green sand which helps with the um, potash or potassium increasing potassium in the soil I got some gypsum just to help um, deal with the clay that we have everywhere this has no nutrient value it just lightens up the soil and makes the soil more pliable I also got some bulb tone to put on all my um, daffodils and 
tulips and things like that. And earlier, I think I might have told you I got some blood meal to address the nitrogen uh, deficiency. And I got some more holly tone because I just needed more holly tone for all the different uh, evergreens that we have that need it. And so, yeah. So, I finally, uh, I think my phone is about to die again. So that's the end of today's um, update. I think tomorrow it might be rainy day, so I don't know that I'll have anything. But Thursday, the plants get delivered that I ordered from the other nursery. So I definitely will keep this video open and running until the plants come on Thursday, and I'll show you then. <gasps> Our plants are here. Well, it's a very exciting day here at Harmony Hills because my plant order was delivered. Let me show you what we got. Ah, oh, it's a thing of beauty. Look at all these beautiful green plants, evergreens, just waiting to be put into the ground. Ah, oh, so lovely. We've got three emerald green arborvitaes. These are really nice, tall specimens. These are both, th I'm sorry, all three of them are, well, let me just pull one up. They're all bigger than... Um, six feet tall already so look at that oh it's just good actually I'm gonna say that's eight feet tall cuz I'm 5'4 and that is really tall let's see if it'll stand on its own uh, yeah I'll just do it real quick <gasps> look at that oh beautiful got three of those all right I'll lay you back down there, little one. Oh, very nice. Okay. Three of those. Emerald green arborvitae. These are the skip laurel. These, there's four of these. These will grow eventually uh, to be eight to ten feet tall, four to five feet wide, I think. Maybe a little wider if you leave them, but I think we're going to probably prune them, keep them around four feet. Um, they're nice, beautiful evergreen. And in the spring, this one is just full of flower clusters. Um, nice, beautiful. Actually, they're not very showy, but the thing about these flowers is that they smell so good. And so that's going to be a wonderfully scented um, evergreen screen. We're going to use that to hide some of the power pole situation back there. Here are my dragon ladies. Maybe we'll call them Daenerys. I don't know. Mother of dragons? I don't know. They're super pokey. I love this plant because it's got an interesting color of green on the leaves. I don't know. It, it comes off as a little bit darker than some of the other hollies. Like this is new growth this season, but the older growth is darker. It does have the veining, which is really interesting. It adds a lot of variety to the leaves. So yellow veining and a little bit of yellow edges. And then the thing that's interesting about this holly is that this white trunk shows through. And um, so the branches are not fully like lush covering the whole trunk. The trunk will show through and it'll be this like dappled views of the trunk as it grows. And she'll get red berries in the winter. And um, we do have to have a male plant nearby to pollinate the berries. Um, fertilize them so that they turn into po pollinate and fertilize the flowers so that they turn into berries um, and so we don't have to have a, the same variety so we're using a china boy holly in the vicinity to pollinate these so in the first year while the china boy is small these ladies might not get as many berries on them as they will in the future but they'll definitely have red berries on them so that'll be nice okay we got the cherokee princess dogwood this is cornus Florida Cherokee princess and this is the one that I was looking for pink flowers and the guy who was showing me around the nursery assured me that this gets pink flowers but I looked it up online and also if I had read this tag then I would have seen the flowers are white so we'll have a white flowering dogwood it'll be fine it'll get red berries in the fall and this one I partic I picked this particular plant out of all the choices because it had a nice branching structure but mainly because look comes with its very own praying mantis cocoon so we're gonna have praying mantises in the yard this year that'll be so fun that's cool I'm excited about that 
four inkberry hollies. These are the shamrock variety. They get a little bit of bare legs at the bottom and then the top is where the growth is centered. And so these are gonna go along the chain link fence behind the hammock, down the hill in the backyard. And here's my beautiful limelight. I've never had a limelight hydrangea and I'm looking forward to having one. This one has beautiful three trunk situation going on in there. So over time, we'll be able to limb it up if we want, turn it into a small tree, or we can keep it as a shrub all the way down on the ground. And I'll make that decision as it grows. Um, this is a really nice specimen. It's been nicely pruned and it does have its leaf nodes coming on. So uh, we know this is a nice, nice healthy specimen it's going to be really lovely up in the corner of the fence area and I think that's what we got so um, the next task is to get these moved into the backyard and placed into their situated uh, locations and see how they look it's gonna look like mm, there's hardly anything there um, because it's a big yard and a small number of plants in the grand scheme but it's still an exciting day so let me get moving There's all our new recruits lined up for inspection. Inkberry Holly, Shamrock Variety, Dragon Lady Holly, Dragon Lady Holly, Cherokee Princess Dogwood, and our new praying mantis babies soon to come, and four skip laurels. I think I'm definitely gonna wait for Dave to get home to help me move those arborvitae. They're eight feet tall with a bound and burlapped, bald and burlapped roots. So they're a little bit beyond my wheelbarrow abilities, I believe so. Oh, and the uh, limelight hydrangea I've already placed over in its spot. Let's go up. There it is. Looks pretty small and dinky compared to the space we've given her, but uh, I think that's gonna be a beautiful shrub to put in this corner here. It'll get uh, four to six feet wide and six to eight feet tall, although you can prune it to keep it in control below those sizes. So that'll be the centerpiece of this corner. Yay! the long view it is starting to come together I really like those skip laurels there that's gonna be a really nice privacy and because the big elm trees are gone there's so much more Sun in that space so these cryptomerias will grow faster than they have been so that's gonna be really nice all right I've got most of the plants into the places or near the places where they're gonna land these dragon ladies I might um, rearrange them a little bit. And I think I am going to get some tall, thin junipers of some kind or another, maybe Blue Point, maybe Skyrocket, or depending on what my local nurseries have, something else. But something to mimic the same kind of habit, tall and thin, 
um, but fill in a little bit more. These dragon ladies only, um, they only grow, in 10 years they say they'll only be about six or eight feet tall and two to four feet wide, depending on how they're pruned. So um, they're not really gonna take up a lot of physical space in here um, until much later, much, much later. So I'm thinking a couple of junipers, maybe three junipers interspersed in a nice little grouping would be nice. Coming this way, the ink berries along the fence are going to be a nice screening. They'll get to be about um, four feet in diameter and four feet tall. So they'll, they'll come up to at least to the top of this fence. I think I want to get a fifth one and put it right here um, just to fill that out. And I'm not going to hedge them. I'm just going to round them all off so that eventually they will all touch each other in a nice rounded form. Down here, I think I've decided I'm gonna get one or two, at least two, maybe three Akubas. And those are the, um, they're evergreen, but they have spotted leaves and they're um, bright yellow and a really nice green uh, leaves. So that's what's gonna go here, I think. Leylands are doing well here. And then the skip laurels, that is wonderful. I'm so happy with these skip laurels in this spot. I'm glad I didn't get five. Four is just right, and these will grow together and hide this guy line, and it'll be a nice soft screening between our yard and the driveway and their front, front porch over there. Okay, and then turning around, the Cherokee Princess Dogwood. I'm not exactly sure where she's going to be situated. She may end up going closer to the grass. This is all going to be planting area mulched eventually. So she may end up moving more toward the grass or she may stay back back here. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then the Arborvitaes, which I haven't brought around yet, they're going to go over here. One of them will go there and then they'll make a curve kind of mimicking the edge of this bed. And uh, at least that's my current vision. I need to get this stuff taken down. I haven't done that yet. Um, so it's coming together. So I just realized that I didn't film a close to the video outside today. I'm sorry about that. I worked all day today. Today's still Thursday. I worked all day outside. Um, I got the four ink berries planted. I got the hydrangeas planted and I finished some edging in one section. I didn't finish all of it. I'm exhausted and there's so much more to do. We haven't touched the mulch pile yet and I've only used two buckets of compost so far. So we got all that to do plus all the planting and it is time, man. It is, it is spring, it is happening, stuff is going on. So I so appreciate you watching this very longer than normal video. Um, they won't all be this long, but I, there's so much going on in the backyard now. It's really in full swing. And so a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I, maybe just watch it in, in little snippets or something. I don't know. It's too late now because I didn't say this at the beginning. Anyway, um, lots of fun things happening around here. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you made it this far, you are a true friend. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.